Hi, this is the house that we've drawn in the first um, few exercises. Now I want to add some notes to it. And instead of being in the home ribbon, which is where all of my normal drawing commands are, I'm in the annotate ribbon. We have the basic text and annotation commands in the home ribbon, but if we go to the annotate ribbon, we've got an awful lot more here to play with. The first thing I'm going to do is create a couple of text styles that will work for this particular drawing. If I click on the little arrow just here, it's going to open up a dialog box. You can see that we've got three text styles here already set up. Annotative, Notes and Standard. Standard is in Arial font height 0, so I, I don't think that would show very well. Notes is also in Arial um, and with a paper text height of 2 millimeters. Annotative um, has a, again a paper text height of 0, but I don't want an annotative text type. I want a non-annotative texting, and I'll talk about annotative probably in another one of these videos. So let's go over here and click on the New Text Style button. And I'm going to call it 1 to 50 labels, because I want it to be printing out at 1 to 50. I'm going to choose myself a text, a, a font for this. That was 1st century Gothic. And I want my text height to be 4 millimeters in the finished drawing. Because I'm going to be drawing at 1 to 50, if I multiply the height I want it to show at by the scale, so 4 millimeters times 50, as in 1 to 50, that gives me the text height that I need to put in. And so if I put in 200 there, because 4 times 50 is 200, that's created my 1 to 50 labels text. And I'm going to set that as my current text style. I'm going to create another one for 1 to 50 notes. OK that. I'm going to make that 100 millimeters high. This high. Apply that. And that's, that's come up still in Century Gothic look. So we'll close that. I'm in 1 to 50 notes. Now to do some text. If I click on the, this, this A here, create myself a text box and I'll call this dining area. That's looking rather small. Let's zoom in and see what we've got. Well, it says dining area, but it is rather small. If I click on it and go back to the annotate ribbon, I can see that's in one text style 1 to 50 notes. I can change that. I meant to put it as a label, not a note. So if I click on 1 to 50 labels, that then changes the text style and makes it bigger because it's twice the size. I'm going to move that so that it's in the middle of the space. Escape out of that. Now I've obviously got the wrong text style as current, so I'll change to 1 to 50 labels, and now I can do some more text. And if I just click out of there, zoom back out, and you can see that it's looking a reasonable size in my um, drawing. The next thing I'm going to look at is dimensions and dimensions do get a bit more complicated but once you've set up your text styles the dimension styles really aren't that bad to do so, so again you've got this little arrow in the bottom corner here that opens up our dimension styles that opens us up a di dimension style manager dialog box and that's what the dimensions look like at the moment these are the styles that they're in I'm going to create myself a new one new, and I'm going to call it 1 to 50, and continue. That then opens up a new dialog box with lots and lots and lots of tabs. We've got lines, symbols and arrows, text, fit, primary units, alternate units, and tolerances. I usually start at the text element, and I'm going to set my text style as my 1 to 50 label style. My text color by layer, don't want any fill, and it's already set my text height at 200. But you can see I can't see my arrows at all. And this text is sitting right on top of the dimension line. I want to move it off the dimension line by something like a third of its height. So if I go for 60, just there, offset from dim line 60. Next, I'm going to go to symbols and arrows. And I'm going to go for an architectural tick, because it's what I'd normally use. 
The arrow size wants to be about the same as your text height. In fact, I'll make it a little bit smaller, I think. And I'll go for 150. Not worried about center marks, not worried about break sizes. Back to lines next. So now you can see we can actually see the architectural ticks, but we should have our dimension lines and our extension lines extending beyond. Color by layer, line type by layer, line weight by layer. Extend beyond ticks, again a third of the text height, so we'll go for 60. Baseline spacing would normally be about four times your text height, so that's going to be something like 800. Our extension lines by layer, line weight by layer, and we want to extend beyond the dimension lines by about the same amount as extending beyond the ticks in at the dimension lines bit. So we'll go for 60 again there. We'll stick with 0.625 as the offset from origin. Um, don't worry about that. Okay. Next, we want to get rid of everything behind the decimal point because uh, we're working in millimeters and you cannot get bits of building which are, are um, designed to the nearest millimeter. So if I go to primary units next, up here, and I'll change the precision to zero. So that gets rid of the oddments. If I had a decimal separator, I'd want it to be a full stop, as in point. The rest of that's all right. And the last one is fit, which is about what you do if there isn't enough room for the text and the arrows inside the extension lines. Okay. Okay. I'm going to make that current and close the dialog box. Now there's lots of useful stuff um, AutoCAD can do with dimensions. So if I zoom in, let's make it a bit bigger, and click on the linear dimension option. My object snap is turned off, so I'll switch that back on because I want to click to the corners of my house. One, two, and then you can see it appear as if by magic, just like that. Now I could carry on going click, 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 which is adequate but a bit unwieldy. If you have a look at this useful little button here, it's a continue button. So if I click on that, it automatically attaches the next dimension to the one I've just done. So you can see how just how quick it can be to add dimensions to a drawing. And then when you've finished, just enter to stop. You can then specify another dimension to continue, or we'll escape that. Okay, very useful, but there's one thing I've done really seriously wrong here, and that's put all my dimensions in the wrong layer. What can I do about that? Very, very simply. If I go back to the home ribbon, I'll click on all of my dimensions. So, Click on my layers drop down and change it to text 1 to 50 layer. It's easy as that. So if you put something on the wrong layer, you don't need to redraw it ever. You simply click on the thing that you need to change and then drop down the layers, choose the layer that you want it to be in. Hopefully that'll give you a bit of a flavor using text and dimensions in AutoCAD and join me for the next one.